Hi there. Thanks for joining us for Together. I'm Karen Lee. This show is dedicated to all the people who come together for Colorado. And today, we have a special show for you. We're going to focus on our threat of wildfires with temperatures certainly heating up. Fire danger remains a serious concern. This summer, at least four major wildfires burned out homes and forced thousands of people from their homes. Well, today, we highlight the stories of the amazing firefighters and grateful evacuees who came together to support one another during these times of crisis. The Lake Christine fire started July 3rd near Basalt and quickly devoured three homes. In the middle of the evacuations, one woman stepped up to help her neighbors, even though she was evacuated herself. Matt Kroschel introduces us to this special volunteer. Sharon Kurtz lives near the Lake Christine fire and quickly realized how serious it was. We went outside, we saw the flames, and we got in the car, we had five minutes, and we got out. But instead of thinking about herself, she rushed to help others. It helps me to not be so nervous and, and worrying about the house. How her volunteer work is making a difference in her community. This is so rewarding. That's next on Together. Well, Colorado would not be the same without the thousands of firefighters who come together to battle these wildfires. And the community is always eager to show their support. Jamie Leary takes us to the Heroes Homecoming. This isn't a parade, but it sure looks like one. Nearly a thousand people gathered in the streets, all to thank firefighters for saving homes. It could have been hundreds. It was feet away from hundreds. Why crews say the firefight was a true community effort. That's later on Together. Well, for hundreds of people living in southern Colorado, a destructive wildfire forced them to make a tough decision. Should they retreat or rebuild? The spring fire ended up burning hundreds of homes near Levita Pass. As Rick Salinger shows us, residents are not giving up on their community. Tracy and Dick Wetzler built their dream home here, and now it's gone. This is what we have left for now. But they have no plans to leave this community. But this is still home, so we want to come back. We'll introduce you to the volunteers helping the Wetzlers and other families move forward. They've given me hope. That's coming up on Together. Oh, for years, the Red Cross has been coming together to support Coloradans during wildfires. This summer, one of their own volunteers found out that she may be the one in need of help. The Lake Christine fire forced Sharon Kurtz out of her home. But instead of living in fear, she decided to serve others. Matt Kroschel and photojournalist John Mason share her story. I think these are recon planes coming in now, and then the bombers will follow them in. All these people can do is watch and hope the flames spare their homes. You get up high and look over this valley and it's, you can see where it could be pretty catastrophic. Inside the Red Cross evacuee shelter at Basalt High School, one evacuee is also very busy volunteering. Our neighbors were coming yelling, please get out, get out now. So we went outside, we saw the flames and we got in the car, we had five minutes, and we got out. Sharon Kurtz isn't sure if her home is still standing. She has volunteered with the Red Cross for 15 years. So when this tragedy struck, she turned to what she knows best, helping others. It helps me to not be so nervous and, and worrying about the house. And her helpful spirit isn't alone here, a community coming together. The people that are coming in have wanted to donate food, water. A lot of people come in and say, I can take animals. So we've got all their names listed. Uh, if we need them, we can call them right away. Neighbors helping neighbors. This is so rewarding to work for Red Cross and helping people and seeing a smile from them because they're thankful we're helping. Oh, so fantastic. Mountain Newsroom reporter Matt Kroschel came down from the mountains to join us here in the city. Now talk a little bit more about this. Our first question, of course, is, is Sharon's home okay? It is, and I think all of that, the credit goes to the firefighters in that first couple of hours of the firefight. Karen, it came down to one aircraft coming in and laying down some amazing retardant line right behind her home and her neighbors, and I think that that really stopped the flames from actually destroying her home and potentially the entire town of Basalt. Yeah, That's how close it was. It's incredible. We all know the work that the firefighters do, but let's talk a little bit about the impact of these volunteers, too. I know for a lot of people in that area, they've got to just be so... Um, 
filled with fear over what's happening. They don't know what's going to happen, right? So volunteers really make a difference. And you know, it's not just the Red Cross. I mean, they're great, yeah. and Salvation Army is great. A lot of these volunteers are not trained in disaster mm -hmm. response. These are people that see something that needs to be done, and they are doing it. It's incredible to find them. You know, we were mm -hmm. in Durango for the 416 fire, and mm -hmm. up in Craig, and anywhere you go in Colorado, these people just step up. Mm -hmm. and we see it time after time. You live up there, as you mentioned, you've seen all these fires take place. You have a lot of family and friends that go through this. Um, what's the biggest lasting impression for you whenever you see something like this strike? Karen, homes can be replaced. Mm -hmm. The sense of community um, is, is what keeps people okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, it can be a very scary situation when you're staring at flames and their whole mountainsides on fire. Mm -hmm. um, but people are okay because they see their neighbors are there to support them, and those are the things that, that keep these communities going. Yeah, they're not alone. Not at all. They're together. Matt, thank you so much for coming down and talking to us about it. We appreciate it. Well, one of Basalt's famous residents wanted to say thank you. Neil Diamond surprised firefighters with an impromptu concert at a community meeting in July. Touching me, touching you, sweet Caroline. The times never seem so good. So good, so good, so good. You can never have enough of Neil Diamond. Well, Diamond serenaded the crowd with sweet Caroline. He and his wife stopped by the command post so they could meet all of the wonderful firefighters in person. I just want to say thank you from the people of this area for coming down. And uh, this town has not been this happy since. I don't know. I've been here for 20 years, and you made everybody happy. That's wonderful. Well, it's not just superstars who are saying thank you. Thousands of Basalt residents are superstars themselves after throwing a special celebration for those firefighters. Jamie Leary and photojournalist Rob McClure take us to the Heroes Homecoming. I'm very relieved. <laughs> It's one way Chief Scott Thompson would describe today. The fire is not contained, but it's contained around the populated area. On July 4th, things were at their worst with heavy winds and dry conditions. That all combined to have rapid and extreme fire behavior that none of us working in this valley for 30, 40 years have ever seen. His crew was just getting to rest when they saw the fire rapidly switch and move towards Al Jabal. And we had to close the doors in the firehouse because the embers and the ashes were coming in the firehouse. No one slept. Help locally and federally was coming in round the clock. This is a group effort of 100 people. This is one of the homes that was devastated. One community member showed us why he was thankful. It could have been hundreds. It was feet away from hundreds. He pointed to his neighbor's home. It's one of three gone, but his is still standing. You know, these are your friends. They're putting their lives on the line to save your home. And that was the most amazing thing and the most heartwarming thing, I think. Tuesday, as the Lake Christine fire smoldered from rain, nearly a thousand people came out to say thank you for all their hard work. It was also the first day Thompson's crew had time to inspect their gear. Uh, this is hose we use on the fire, so we're just getting it back in service. Tools needed sharpening, and every vehicle inspected. Yeah, it's definitely been a bit more hectic since we've had this fire. All to get ready for the next big fire. My job is to protect property and take care of my firefighters and try to save lives, and that's exactly what we did. Boy, did they. Well, imagine heading back home after a wildfire, unsure of what's left. Well, this family in Durango is one of the lucky ones. Their message to the crews who worked hard to save their home. I don't usually hug big men. Give me a hug, man. All right. <laughs> oh, Scott, I can't believe it. I just can't. Together with Karen Lee, sponsored by Canvas Credit Union. We're Canvas, and we've got you covered, Colorado. Go live. Firefighters from all over the state come together for Colorado during a wildfire. When the 416 fire broke out near Durango back in June, the Denver Fire Department was just one of many statewide that offered their help. Together, they prevented the flames from reaching homes. It was an emotional homecoming for many. Thank you so much. Oh, man. 
You've been here this whole time. Oh, yes, ma'am. Taking care of us. Oh, thank you. I just what, can't believe. What about you guys? You guys Can, have such big hearts besides yeah. being great firefighters. A house is a house, but you know, life is something else. You guys got houses, you got kids, you know, and to come down here and do all this for us, it's just unbelievable. Okay, that'll make you cry. I know just, what you say. I've got a few tears in my eyes right now. That is such a beautiful too. scene. Oh, Lauren Whitney joins us now to talk about this. And Lauren, there's so many um, people out there that were impacted by this. They want to say thank you, and, and you just have to give a hug. It means so much to people to have firefighters put their lives on the line. And you know, like the guy just said, they have families at home. Yeah. They have wives and kids to deal right. with. So the fact that they do sacrifice so much time of their own life to go, because this is all volunteer stuff too. So wonderful to see that. And we have a group yeah. of firefighters too. This is uh, from the Aurora Fire Department. You can see they are ready to go and happy to do so and help with all the wildfires across the state. And take a look at this. This is from the Spring Fire and the fan, uh, folks down there in Werfano County, their fire department helping out. So they are saying thank you to that. How cute is that? Yeah, we everyone wants to do something, right? And those poster boards and the pictures and the cookies, all this stuff makes a difference. It makes a big difference. And of course, we know the 416 fire we just talked about, a huge one down near Durango. A lot of folks helped out the firefighters by giving them some care packages, which I'm sure they really appreciate it. Yeah, every little bit counts, doesn't it? And this is my favorite picture. How cute is this? This is a thank you card to the 416 firefighters from some local elementary school students. And I saw on their Facebook uh, post about this that all of the firefighters appreciated it so much because that came from the little ones who yeah. really appreciated what they were doing. Oh, Lauren, thank you for sharing all those. And as always, we appreciate you sending in those photos. So be sure to share your photos with us. We want to see them. Send us an email at togetherforcolorado at cbs.com. You can also post it on social media using the hashtag for Colorado. And we will be sure to share it right here on this show. Well, we all know it's amazing what Coloradans can do when they come together. Just take a look at the Royal Gorge. The tourist destination has made an impressive comeback following a wildfire there. The community's crucial role in the rebuild that's coming up next on Together. Coming up on this week's Together for Colorado calendar, on Thursday, celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month at the Latin Beats Community Concert in Denver. Saturday, it's the Energy Day Festival at East High. Today is meant to get kids excited about careers in science, technology, engineering, and math. Sunday, explore the city inside out at Doors Open Denver. The event allows people access into historic buildings all over town. For more information on these events, just head to the Together for Colorado page at cbsdenver.com. The most destructive wildfire to hit this summer was in southern Colorado. The spring fire destroyed hundreds of homes west of Walsenburg. It started June 27th and was finally 100% contained just this Monday. Rick Salinger and photojournalist Eric Bloomer went back to that area and found volunteers working together for their Colorado neighbors. They also found a couple who is not giving up after losing their home. A once majestic panorama is now scarred by the sight of burned trees and destroyed homes. This is what we have left for now. This had Everything been Tracy and Dick fell. Wetzler's dream house Those after moving now. to Colorado 16 years ago from Illinois. This is my husband's Lincoln Town car. The spring fire may have taken away their possessions, but not their spirit. This is awful, <laughs> but this is still home. So we want to come back. The blaze roared through here, consuming more than 100,000 acres, making it one of the state's biggest fires ever recorded. Tracy was at work and urgently called her husband at home in Forbes Park. I said, get out. Doesn't matter what you have, doesn't matter what you don't have, just get out. Some of our pottery. They got out, but could bring little with them, so they've had to salvage what um, they can. This little box is filled with love, love from me to you. It's always here to comfort you whenever you feel blue. It seems fitting this survived when so much around them did not. This story can be told and retold more than a hundred times over, but then that would only include the houses that were lost. There were some that were spared, but what was a beautiful, dense forest is now desolation around them. Volunteers have moved in 
to clear out trees and remove debris from the homes. They're from what's called Team Rubicon, made up mainly of veterans. And being able to help people on their worst day is payment enough for me. The impossible now seems doable. They've given me hope. Five days ago, I looked at the mess we had and I thought, there is no way that my husband and I can do this. Tracy not only lost her home, but so did her parents. The spring fire devoured their house and all around it, but somehow their flags were left untouched. Just proof no one has to go through this alone. Well, here's another example of the community coming together to rebuild. Five years ago, a wildfire burned through the Royal Gorge near Canyon City. Buildings were destroyed, and that landscape, that beautiful landscape, was torn apart. But since then, the Royal Gorge has made incredible progress. This is the park now. The iconic bridge is no longer the only way to get across. Now you can fly on the zip line or take the newly built gondola. Peggy Gare has worked at the Royal Gorge for 18 years. Now, after the fire, she turned to the community to get involved with helping them rebuild. We have had to rebuild the park. We lost 90% of it. They come to see the bridge and the gorge, and then everything else we have is extra, and they love it. And why stop there? The park is not done rebuilding just yet. There are plans to add even more flying attractions in the future. Well, all of us can come together and do our part to prevent wildfires. In our reporting, we have met so many wonderful people who are working hard to keep flames from destroying homes. How their work is making a big difference in the lives of Coloradans. That's coming up next on Together. Catch the latest episodes of Together as well as your favorite Together for Colorado stories anytime at CBSDenver.com. Well, so far, we have focused a lot on the fire fight, but what about fire prevention? Mitigation has saved hundreds of homes from being destroyed by wildfires. And in many places, that work is all thanks to generous volunteers. Just this past July, the Summit Association of Realtors picked up chainsaws, clippers. They helped homeowners build defensible space around their homes. Now, many of the residents say if it wasn't for these volunteers coming out there, there's no way they could do all the work themselves. My husband had a stroke a couple years ago, so it's, you know, he's not there and able to help us out. So, um, you know, having these people come out and help me is, is just amazing. Now, there are other programs meant to help homeowners build defensible space. For example, Boulder County's Wildfire Partners Program offers financial assistance for fire mitigation. And we have put more information on that program in the links and info section of CBSDenver.com for you. Well, thank you so much for joining us on Together. We're going to see you back here next week with more stories of how people are coming together for Colorado. So please keep sending me your story ideas and your feedback. I really love to hear from all of you. Until next time, we take you to Glenwood Springs, where photojournalist John Mason has the sights and sounds of the creek with no name.